Burnside. Good morning, yeah. everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome Good morning. to worship on this Transfiguration <laughs> Sunday. Um, the mouthful. Um, but it is chock full of meaning also. Um, it's good that you're all here. It's good that our folks on Zoom are joining us also. Um, this Wednesday, uh, we begin the season of Lent. Um, and there are a few copies left of our Lenten devotional. So if you like one of those, please take one of those with you. Uh, I will be joining my colleague, the Reverend Mary White, um, distributing Ashes to Go this Wednesday um, in front of St. James. Uh, we will have our fire pit out there and we will be um, offering ashes and or a blessing um, and on head or hand, however you'd like to receive them. Uh, and we'll be there from eight to nine in the morning, 11.30 to one midday, and then five to six after the work hours. Um, so stop on by um, and we would love to share some ashes and some words of blessing with you. And if you are not able to come to us, I am happy to come to you. I already have a list of four folks that I'm gonna be bringing ashes to. Uh, so if that works better for um, your schedule and or your situation, um, please let me know that by, before Wednesday. Uh, next Sunday is Communion Sunday, so for all of our Zoom friends, um, please have uh, bread or, or cracker and juice or wine on hand. Um, and I'd also encourage all the folks that are able to come in person. Uh, Communion Sunday is always a great Sunday to remember our friends um, who are served by the Arlington Food Shelf and bring non-perishable food items that can go in the box in the narthex. Um, I'd invite you to definitely stop by the Do Something table. Uh, besides picking up a Lenten devotional, we always have things that need to happen and need, we need help with throughout um, the upcoming Lenten season for sure. Uh, the other thing is too, during Lent we don't put flowers out because it's intended to be a more reflective and, um, and we try, we're kind of building up to when we'll have lots of Easter flowers. But what we are gonna do this year is have a lot of cactus. So if you have cacti, and that can be Christmas cactus, as long as they're not flowering, um, any kind of cactus, I'd really appreciate getting. And you can either drop it off sometime this week to the office or you can bring it with you next Sunday and we'll incorporate it into our design. And it will be a way to reflect on our journey through Lent. And um, lastly, when you go out to coffee hour, besides some great refreshments um, and to enjoy on what we are dubbing a, our Mardi Gras Sunday, um, I'd invite you also to take a look at the table that's on your way out the door of Bailey Hall. There's a lot of produce there from Veggie Van Gogh. Help yourself, there's carrots and melons and what else is there? Peppers. Yeah, there's a ton of stuff, so please help yourself. Um, it was shared with a lot of different folks in the community, and there's still more to be had. That's all we have now for announcement-y type things, so I'd invite us to dive into our service of worship with our opening hymn, number 66 in the red hymnal, We Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven.
I invite you to join me in the call to worship. Something drew us together this morning. Some holy mystery we call God. We hear in the name of Jesus. Some indescribable hope we feel when we gather in the spirit. May our experience of the divine transform our doubts and fears and prepare us to love the world. Oh God, you are beyond words and description. Your love is beyond knowledge and explanation. Make our hearts ready to receive you. Change us, we pray, that our lives may reflect the glory of your transfiguration. We rejoice in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now join together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, girls, don't come down. <laughs> Kelly and Celia, I want you to come closer to the edge, but don't get to be safe, but come closer so I can see you both. Kelly, I can't really see you because come right to the front of the balcony. So today we're going to be talking about transfiguration it's a hard concept to understand it means changing you know, there's a lot happening there but what happened was jesus went up on a mountain so we're going to pretend you're up on a mountain right now and how's the view from up there what do you think can you see a lot of stuff you can, like i personally if i was going to church here that would be where i'd sit most of the time because it's got the best view one you can see all types of stuff but they go up on that mountain and they're in a place where amazing things happen and where they see Jesus in a whole new way as you're about to hear in a few minutes and they are in awe and so um, there's a reason why we put that camera up there, why Walt is up there um, with our Zoom folks. Um, and they're all getting, they actually get your mountaintop view, the mountaintop view that you get. And the thing though about mountaintops and the thing that Walt and both of you will have to do eventually is come back down to earth, down to this level here. But in the meantime, that think about all the things that make it special to be in a place where you can see so much and feel so much at a, in a place that's higher up because that doesn't happen too often in life except for some of our friends who've been on planes recently i know that sue's flown on a plane recently i know that brian's flown on a plane recently that bring gives you a whole new view of the world well this new view that you all have up there that special view is a little bit of what the three disciples that are with Jesus get to see. They get to see, and maybe it's because up, when you're up high, things take look totally different. Uh, so hold on to that view, you all, and um, we're going to continue, and I'll say a prayer, and then we'll keep going with the service, and you can stay right up there if you'd like. Loving and gracious God, most of our days, we're not on top of mountains. We're not up high looking out on all of your creation. But we have the chance to see you, to see you in each person we meet, in the beautiful flowers and the lovely snow and the icicles that make that, those <laughs> looking, it looks almost like rain stuck in place. So all that glory, all that beauty, we know comes from you. And we know that when we look into the eyes of each other, we are seeing God, just as surely as those disciples were looking at Jesus and seeing God. And so we ask your blessing this day and all our days. Amen.
Well, we don't always need mountaintop experiences. In fact, most of the time we're working our way, our way through every day. And so, but in those days, we certainly have cause for celebration. And sadly, we have cause for sharing concerns for folks we know and care about. Today, though, we, it is a joy to be able to celebrate with the other Federated Church in the um, Southwest Association, the Federated Church of Castleton and their pastor, the Reverend Rob Noble. And we also are praying today for the First Congregational Church of Manchester and their pastor, Chris Heinz. Um, concerns we know about, um, the family of Gray Fletcher, um, who was of San, from Sandgate. We ask prayers for them. We also ask prayers for the family and friends and students and colleagues of Jim Derby, whose uh, service will be this afternoon in Bennington. Wait, what? Jim Derby died. Yeah, I'm doing his service this afternoon. Yeah. Um, and um, we, by way of concerns, I invite you to uh, hold Sue's uh, friends, April and Mary, in prayer. They have been experiencing health issues. Uh, I would ask prayers for my niece, Julia, who has been in the hospital this past week in North Carolina. And I'd also ask prayers for my colleague, Paul Iyer, who is the pastor of the Federated Church in Williston and who has just been diagnosed with lymphoma. And as every morning and for the last few days, we've awoken to the news um, of what is going on in Ukraine, I would ask for prayers of peace and hope that um, there will be a peaceful solution to this. We pray for all of those who've already lost lives. We pray that, um, that the world will pay attention and that we will um, all realize that we are inextricably woven together. And so I would invite us now then to lift these prayers and any of the prayers you hold within you. God of life and love, God of new beginnings, hear the prayers of your people this day. As we commemorate that day long ago when Jesus' beloved disciples were granted a deeper understanding and new appreciation of his nature and personhood, may that same experience be ours. Make us a people who live out our gratitude. Today, we offer our thanksgiving for the joy of our friends at the Federated Church of Castleton and their pastor, Rob, and for our friends at First Congregational Church in Manchester and their pastor, Chris. Oh God, the disciples learned that you have been revealing yourself throughout the ages in human beings like Elijah and Moses, who sought to teach people about you and who sought to follow your leading. May we also seek to have our lives count for you. The disciples learned that Jesus is the Christ, the one who most fully reveals your nature, your will, and your ways. May we look more often into the mirror provided by the life of Jesus, seeking to discern how closely our lives conform to his image and promising anew to align our words and deeds with his. The disciples learned that life is not a continuous mountaintop experience and that they soon had to descend the mountain and return to their daily routines, as well as the world that is filled with those who are grieving and hurting and struggling. We lift up to your tender mercy and grace today. All those who've known and loved Gray and Jim. We also pray healing prayers for April and Mary and Julia and Paul. And we surround the people of Ukraine the people of Russia, the people of your world, with prayers for peace. Remind us, O oh God, that we soon will leave this time of worship and return to our lives of work and school and rest. May we carry with us the inspiration of this day 
as we are now fulfilling your commandment to remember the Sabbath and to keep it holy. May we not forget the weekday and keep it holy as well. In the transforming life and love of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'd invite us now to stand and stay standing through the prayer of dedication um, as we sing together number 258 in the red hymnal, A Wondrous Sight, O Vision Fair. of our world are too numerous to name. Shelter, food, clean air, water. Our gifts touch these needs, but the biggest gift we can give is to love the world so much that we give of ourselves. Nothing will transform need more than sacrificial love. So as you place your gifts in the offering plate, perhaps, or mail them in, or drop them off, or send them electronically, don't let your giving be done. Start planning to go deeper. May God now bless our hopes and dreams as we sing together the doxology. we bring before you are gifts that we intend to go toward the work of building up your kingdom. And so we know that we need your blessing. We need you to walk with us as we do this work that you call us to. So bless our gifts, bless our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning again. Good morning. Our psalm of the day comes from Psalm 99. The Lord reigns, let the nations tremble. 
He sits enthroned between the cherubim. Let the earth shake. Great is the Lord in Zion. He is exalted over all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The King is mighty. He loves justice. You have established equity. In Jacob, you have done what is just and right. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel was among those who called on his name. They called on the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them from the pillar of cloud. They kept his statutes and the decrees he gave them. Lord our God, you answered them. You were to Israel, the forgiving God, but you found to share this Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. Our gospel reading comes from Luke chapter 9, verses 28 through 36. About 10 days later, Jesus took Peter, John, and James up on a mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face was transformed, and his clothes became dazzlingly white. Suddenly, two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared and began talking with Jesus. They were glorious to see, and they were speaking about his exodus from this world, which was about to be fulfilled in Jerusalem. Peter and the others had fallen asleep. When they woke up, they saw Jesus' glory and the two men standing with him. As Moses and Elijah were starting to leave, Peter, not even knowing what he was saying, blurted out, Master, it's wonderful for us to be here. Let's make three shelters as memorials, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But even as he was saying this, a cloud overshadowed them and terror gripped them as the clouds covered them. Then a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. When the voice finished, Jesus was there alone. They didn't tell anyone at that time what they had seen. With arms outstretched, both reaching for each other. Those awkward first steps are taken. That first day of school, when the bus pulls away or the classroom door closes. The sound of the ignition turning over and then they're off by themselves in the car right after passing their road test. That first night when they no longer live under your roof and their drawers have been cleaned out and the quiet of the house without them is deafening. With every milestone of growth and independence, our hearts and minds turn back to what was. We may be tempted to ask the question, how did this happen? Was all that love and emotional energy invested in them meant to come down to them leaving? For all of us who've ever parented or been parented, the knowledge that one day the child will leave is both a moment of pride and dread. We have a lovely hand stitch wall hanging at the top of the stairs of the parsonage to that effect. It says, there are only two lasting bequests we can hope to give our children. One of these is roots, the other wings. Sometimes it's all we think about, and other times we're afraid to give voice to it, hoping that by not talking about it, it might not happen. Today's mountaintop experience is one of awe and wonder where a potential heavenly vision, the world as it will become, is glimpsed. But what is spoken between Moses, who is believed to have written the Torah, and Elijah, who was among the most prestigious of prophets, together embodying the law and the prophets, and then there's Jesus, who had just finished sharing one of his hardest teachings, that he must suffer die and rise again, and that followers must take up their cross and follow him 
amid all of that shining light. Maybe he intended to reassure and encourage Peter and John and James. Jesus talks about his departure here. The Greek word is exodus or exodus. Moses is forever bound to the exodus or liberation in delivering the people from Egypt and toward freedom. It will be Jesus's life, which will be another kind of deliverance or liberation for the people of God. There they were, three amazing figures that keep Peter, John, and James awake in awe. Maybe they were overcome by being in the presence of greatness, or they just wanted to hold on to this moment with all its majesty, freezing it in time, or perhaps not fully appreciating the foretelling that Jesus is offering here. Peter offers to build permanent buildings in which they can dwell, all in an effort to hold on to what can only be the most surreal experience imaginable. Luke, in his gospel, has a way of drawing us in because he shows Jesus engaging all the time with his disciples, and he repeatedly tells the Jesus story from the perspective that it's not just him alone, but it is Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the church that are all the main characters of his story. Now, back in the story of Jesus' baptism at the hands of John that we began this epiphany season with that ends this week, the very first question asked was, what are we to do? Luke wants us as disciples to know that we are intended through the power of the Holy Spirit to do something. This departure that Jesus speaks of is a way of empowering us, the ones who remain, Jesus comes to us, stays among us, and also, as is only pointed out in Luke's version, departing from us, just as he is about to embark on his journey toward Jerusalem. This transfiguration is a taste of the resurrection to come. Jesus' resurrection will be a departure uh, from just like Moses was. Um, Moses led his people out of Egypt. Jesus is leading his disciples. And that's all of us, away from the known to the unknown. Jesus is leading us toward new life. And we are privy to this experience on the mountaintop in a way that those other nine disciples were, um, who weren't on the mountain or anyone else paying attention to Jesus back then None of them got to experience it. In Matthew, this transfiguration is definitively described as a vision. But here we get to witness Jesus and Peter and James and John experiencing God. And it is God who once again affirms Jesus as his son. And it is God who wants these three to realize that when Jesus speaks, they are to listen really carefully because that is God speaking. As we complete this season of Epiphany where we have embraced Jesus as a healer and teacher and prophet, we know that just before what we heard today, Peter has called him Messiah. We are about to depart from this season of light, that's what Epiphany is, and journey down the mountain into the ashes of this Wednesday and the sorrow and sadness that will take us through Lent, including all that happens during Holy Week. But first, before we take off, let us not lose sight of the light that transfigures Jesus. This light we are about to experience an everyday experience. And that means, though, that we have to seek it out. We have to look for it. This is the light that will change us, not into something else, but by helping us to see within ourselves, finding the best of who we are and what we're made of. That may mean digging deep for the strength to cope with the losses and the illness 
and the human suffering that we see on our screens and right in front of us. God's glory may not shine in white brightness that is immediately obvious. In fact, most likely it will be more like a small flashlight rather than a 100 watt bulb. Perhaps that might be what we will need most to get through the next six weeks of Lent. Just small luminaries on the hope, on the path of hope. I invite us to pray now. May we give way to glory, O God. May we let the light tangle with our lives that we may see what you see in us. May we see what you see a love born in eternity that finds a home in our souls and wants to be there. A word that lifts itself from page into life and tells a story that begins with itself. May we see what you see, a vision that brings past and future into the one meeting place and offers it all as present. A wisdom born of generations where time nurtures the promise and the longing of, longings of believers, wondering if this will um, be the generation that breaks it open. May we give way to glory and dare its splendor to rekindle our faith and transfigure our lives. So be it. Amen. I invite us to go out singing our closing hymn, number 90 in the red hymnal, Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones.
may God now send us back down the mountain of our worship. We have been changed. We can't be silent anymore. We have seen the light of the world. Go and share the radiance of God's love. now offering each other words of God's peace. Peace be with you, everybody. Be with you. Have a good week. Have a great week, everybody. Keep safe, everybody. Love you.